So I think it was a month ago uh, when we spoke about an idea for this sound panel. And we had several ideas, like everybody's introducing themselves and just show, doing a showcase of everybody's work, but that would be boring, right? You, you see that in every game conference. If you see over and over, they're self-gloating on each other's work. And I think we have here a very talented array of sound composers. So we sat down and we decided that this time, I'll be the, I'll be the client. I'll, ask, I'll, I'll send those talented guys a list of games. They will choose one game. And those kind of games is, are games that they never heard about. So they will pick one game, and they will compose, according to my request, another alternative uh, soundtrack for it. So I think uh, we'll start describing the game that I chose. OK, so I'm, I'm playing that without sound, because that's the way they saw that. And I'm wondering if any of you is recognizing that, that game. Anyone? So that's a game that was developed in 2007 by Edmund McMillan, which is the game designer of Super Meat Boy. You probably recognize that name. And that was actually one of the first, I'll play that again, that was actually one of, the, one of his first games. Uh, and, and what's unique is that this is his own game design and art, and he did that just to tell about his time in high school and in, in elementary school, and what bullying he was experienced. And this game is a, a game that you play a very small boy, shaped like an octopus-like creature, and a monster. And you have to travel through planets, and when you succeed, you transform them from monochrome to real color. And it's a really interesting puzzle game, and I thought that was a nice pick. So I think let's hear, or let's ask for the first uh, sound composer, um, Alon Kaplan. Can you? Hello. Hi. <laughs> so I wanted. I, I was very interesting when you seen that. Um, when you seen that film. When you seen that uh, that that cut of a game. What did you thought about the game, and what? made you select uh, the, the, the soundtrack that we will hear in a second. Um, what was the parameter that guided you and the vision by uh, composing the way that you did? OK. Hi, everyone. Um, when I saw the game, first, the first thing I see is this little strange creature. I'm not sure what is it. Is it a small elephant or whatever? And. Um, so I immediately thought uh, the music uh, should be, uh, for a start, should be small and cute. It's a very cute creature. So I started to compose this uh, cute music, and uh, I chose a cute sound for it. And then uh, I saw the pace of the game. Like, it's a, it's a nice pace. It's uh, not so fast, it's, uh, it, but it has a rhythm. You just jump all the time on these ropes, and it's, uh, it has a kind of... Uh, also, kind of a cute rhythm, so I chose to do a, a little waltz music, uh, but uh, I didn't stop there because if it was just a cute little waltz, it won't be uh, an, enough uh, energy. And this is a game after all, and you need to keep going and everything, so I added uh, drums and bass and everything. And then the interesting part came, which uh, I saw that the more higher you get, you get uh, to a darker place to the space, and it's... Uh, you get uh, a little more uh, loneliness feeling. So I said I should change something in the music. This could be applied in, uh, in the game also, in uh, like Unity 5, you can do that, you can control the, the, the channels. So I actually did, I did uh, something that is called a, a low pass and high pass filter, which is changing the frequencies of the drums and the bass. So according to the height of the uh, creature, the music uh, changed. So the drums and the bass disappear the more higher you get. And when you get back to the ground stage, the, all the drums come back. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Great. So let's, let's listen to what you composed.
Awesome. Thank you. Well done. So um, my next sound composers is uh, Inon. Hi, Inon. Hi. I know you and most of your creation, and there's always drums in there. The, it's it's always it's all almost energetic, super energetic composing, with a very fast-paced um, methods. What did you think when you seen that that game for the first time, and how did it affected you? So yeah, it's true. I think my favorite uh, instrument to play is the drums. So I always f try to find new ways to use it in new places where I can lead with the drums, and. This task was uh, a little bit special because no one really told us what we need to do. Usually you have like a client and he says like, ah, I want it like this or I want it like that. So I kind of took this opportunity to say, okay, the drums are gonna lead here. No, there is no one to tell me that this is not <laughs> what's happening. So, and the, the first thing I did was I sat at the drums and I played the video and I just played the drums, kind of trying to sense the, the rhythm of the, of the game and recreate it with the drums. So everything afterwards followed that uh, process. Okay, great. Let's listen to your creation. Wow. <laughs> Amazing, man. Thanks. Same, but, but I'm biased. I'm a drummer. <laughs> OK, so um, my next song composer, my favorite maybe? No, I'm not biased, um, is Nivgo. And I, I don't really, um, so w when I know your, your composing, you don't have any one tool that guides your work you like work with everything. I mean, you're not like only a drummer, you, you do everything. So what? True. And I was really intrigued to see your work. And I was thinking, um, did you even think that this game is related to something that is like bullying or something that try to teach something? Because when you look f f at first at, the, at that game, you have no clue. I mean, when I, when I got to know the game at the first time, I thought it's just a fun puzzle game, but then I discovered, and I also talked about it overseas, uh, on using that to, to explain to children the difference and making their life better, and that the transformation between monochrome and color. So what were you thinking when you were seeing the first time th that kind of a game, and uh, did you have a plan when you seen it at the first time to how to compose it, or what elements to use? As um, okay, so hi everybody. And um, the first thing what I saw, I, I don't have a plan since I see it for the first time. I cannot have a plan. So I just get feelings and, you know, from the images, from the movement, from the uh, atmosphere and the, the inner beat of the game. I just get the senses. And what caught my eye, first of all, it's that it's black and white. It's very monochrome, maybe it's a better word. And uh, the movement of the, uh, when he hangs on the uh, cloud, this movement, I think that was the first thing that really caught my uh, attention. It felt like dit, dit, dit. But I must say before, no, I, I'm not sure if the audience know, but we haven't seen each other works. It's the first time as well, am I right? So it's very interesting because I, I saw this uh, movement of this uh, swinging and it felt waltz to me as well. Yeah, even though it's like boom, boom, it's like moving like this, it felt like one, two, three, one, two, three. I don't know why, it just, 
I heard it in my mind. I usually do hear it in my mind. I never go and play to look for stuff. I just hear it and I do it. That's it. So it felt like waltz. And I thought, okay, I go for a waltz. And uh, you asked about the atmosphere of the game, uh, what it delivers. So as I said, since it's a monochrome and something about the, the images of the, uh, uh, of the characters, you do sense the, the uh, loneliness. And I also played the game, by the way, without hearing its music, which I didn't do. I, and, uh, I don't know if you did, but I never heard the, oops, I never heard the original uh, music of the game. Anyhow, um, so I, I went for the waltz. I began to do it a little bit orchestral, a, bit, a little bit classic. And then I thought I'm, I'm going to twist it, because it's not classic game in the, in the musical uh, sense, I mean, uh, classic. And so uh, I did a I did few twists. I went for a flute, which is not exactly like a flute. It's like a little bit uh, cute flute, like a bit synthesized. This will uh, represent the, the boy, the character, the main character. And uh, I chose the cello to go for the, uh, this creature, this monster, underneath this uh, kid. And as a general feel, I, I added some uh, orchestral sounds, but uh, all in all, it's not a classic orchestral sound to represent what's going on there. And then when it goes up, I, uh, I left the waltz. Instead of going one, two, three, one, two, three, I went one, ta, 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 one, ta, ta, to, to increase the intensity of the game. I added some drums, and uh, maybe you should see it. Yeah, so before we, we listen to your uh, soundbite, um, that reminded me that there is another game that is called Papo and Yo, which you play uh, a kid and a monster. And they're, they're both very good friends, uh, but when the monster is eating frogs, it becomes very wild. And the creator of the game made that based on his father, which was an, alco an alcoholic person. And he always tried to change him. But he always knew that when his father is turning into that monster, he cannot do anything. He, 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 he wanted to help him most of his life, but eventually, and the end of the game, I will not ruin it, but uh, there, there, there is still hope. It's a, it's a semi-happy, semi-bad end. So that re reminded me really the inspiration of that game which was made like um, maybe eight years later on. So let's... By the way, if you play the game in the intro, I didn't read any background of the game. There's a story, yeah. Yeah, it, it just says it's a lonely boy, he's going to look in uh, other uh, uh, planets to see if he's the only lonely one or there are others. So exactly. it does reflect in the game, of course. Okay, let's listen. <laughs> Thank you. So last but not least, Arnold. Hi. Hello. Are we going to hear a metalhead yes. version of that? <laughs> yeah? No, no. You will not fail. No. Um, what, what did you think? Yeah, so first of all, we, uh, as Niamh said, we, we didn't get a chance to um, hear until now the, the other composers. And I was talking to a guy, and I went like, uh, yeah, I think everyone are gonna sound pretty much the same, and uh, and I was wrong. <laughs> um, for me, it was basically I saw that there are four parts to to this video. Um, the first one is um, where he's jumping on the balloons, and uh, 
as uh, everyone here said, there is a certain rhythm to it. Uh, then there is the transition when you go up and uh, everything becomes darker and, uh, um, and also a lot faster. The, the pace there changes dramatically. Um, and then when you come down. So I kind of thought about it as those four moments uh, where I want to go pretty intense um, when the pace is fast uh, because I want to have this. I kind of had the feeling that the game doesn't, um, like it's, it's action-y, so I should support that. So I went very um, electronic action music there. Um, but also at the same time, there are two elements of the game. One is cuteness because it's, it looks kind of cute, so, so you still have to maintain that uh, for the whole process. And the other one is I think the game is kind of not really polished, if you know what I mean. Like, um, not that it's bad, but it has this feeling like, you know, it's not a AAA game when someone said, and like, I've worked on every pixel, it's like. Yeah, actually the game was developed in seven days. Yeah, makes sense. And it was based on uh, scribbings of Edmund McMillan in his, in his notebook. So that's actually quite the original, but a little bit polished uh, drawings that he made. So yeah, it's a, it's very indie. It's very interesting story behind that. It's actually a, the game has several worlds. So every world has its own colors when it is completed and its own physics or yeah, quest to makes fun. sense. So so I kind of wanted also to have this feeling in the music, and this was a bit of a weird choice where I didn't want to overproduce it. So it's kind of has this home recording sound to it where it's almost distorted, but it's not like, like it's not a very good mix and mastering as, as you would normally do. So that's what I was trying to go for. What was the most difficult part of composing for that game? Um, I, I guess challenge. I, I think the transitions were very important to me. So landing those, like uh, I wanted it to feel exactly the, um, that the transitions will be smooth between the, the parts. Um, but yeah, I guess those. And also there is a, a thing that I, I didn't know anything about the game before, but I kind of had the feeling that there is a story to it. I, 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 like the first time I saw it, I thought like, okay, okay, this is just an action game. And then I saw it a few times, and at some point I went like, all right, there, there is a story to it. I have no idea what it is. Like I, this is the first time I found out that it's about bullying. But but it's interesting that I did figure out that there was some kind of story, so I also wanted some motive to have, so I have something at the beginning that is there again at the end. Yes. So, so for me, for the first time I looked at that game through the YouTube link, uh, the th first thing I sensed it was the, the differentiation between the descending and the elevation. And for me, elevation was like, I'm getting happier, I'm free, I'm, f I'm flying, wee. And getting down is like getting very depressing. But I didn't know the story. It's, it's actually and two different approaches here of uh, Neil yeah. and Alon. Alon, when you go up, uh, took the drums out. It's more quiet. Brought yeah. them in, and I think my, mine is a lot closer to, to Neil's. OK, great. So let's sound download composing. <laughs> Amazing. So I think we have about five minutes up until the questions. So what I would like is like one line or maybe several tips for people who are just starting to compose, getting out of Rimon school or other sound composing schools. 
and getting over with that kind of a drill salon you told me you had such a test in Ramon school like composing for for games without the soundtrack and everything and Arnold as well it was a uh, yeah we did it uh, in the same class yeah actually. you learned together but it, it was uh, for film not for uh, video games yeah. actually but uh, he did a lot better and he was better that assignment <laughs> but he cheated <laughs> I just did a piano composition yeah but um, if we're talking about tips for yeah for some comp composers um, yeah uh, okay uh, always look about the uh, story of course yeah first thing and uh, get into the feeling of the movement and uh, I, I always like when I work on uh, video games I ask for a, a video game play video like I, I ask for video and not just to get the, the build of the game because I really want to compose it as a film composer really see what's going on in the game and be able to all the time check uh, the music with it so yeah that's my tip um, for me the it depends if the music is, if the question is like, you know, business-wise of how to get into the industry or musical. Creatively. Um, creative, yeah, I think um, put the story first because musicians, especially after um, studies tend to, you know, they land their first gig, so they have this uh, option to make a video game or something and then they really want to make sure that the music is cool or you know that it's as complex as they can because they've just spent four years studying you know orchestration and and whatever um and a lot of the times in young composers you kind of see that um they're overdoing a lot of things and um putting like the musical ego which we all have um before the game or the story so i think the main tip is like forget about the music as funny as it sounds, think about what the story needs and support that. And if the story needs just like one note for three minutes, do that. And if if the game requires a huge symphonic orchestra, then do that. Inon? Um, yeah, I, I agree. I also think you should um, kind of uh, think what characteristics of the game you want to reinforce uh, by adding something from the music and which ones you want to kind of counter. Sometimes you can emphasize something by, by doing the opposite. So if there is something really sad and you're putting uh, happy music, sometimes it will kind of bring it out even more. Um, so I think it, it's really important to, to know your place as a musician and know that, that, again, this is in most cases not your game and you need to consult the other guy. But know what you want to reinforce and what you want to counter with your music. Okay, Niv, let's sum it up. Um, I think a um, composer should always be open-minded and um, not to be afraid to delete. If, if if I did something or if he did something which might not be the perfect uh, uh, the perfect tune or the perfect atmosphere to support the story, like my colleagues here said, I think uh, you need to be... Uh, uh, not reasonable, but to have the courage to delete it and make a new one all the time, to experiment, to try. It not, sometimes the first thing you come up with is great. I'm not saying it's not, but sometimes it's not. And uh, always remember it and try again if there's a need. Don't get too attached to it. Yes. In case of films, that's true. Or, or games, of course. So I want to thank you all. It was really great hearing you all. Composement. Uh, yeah, uh, we have time for, I think, three questions. Anybody? I'll come down to you. Hey. Uh, first of all, great examples, all of you. Uh, when we are working with uh, sound producers or composers in-house, it's very convenient because they are part of the process. They are seeing the different development stage of each project. They, they get the vision. They know where it's going to go, etc. But often when working with external sound producers, I am presenting them the game in a very later stage, when we are finished with the development or we're just in the, you know, the QA uh, stage, the first time that the sound composer is going to see the game. Uh, do you have any like tips or, uh, I don't know, guidelines, or what is the best approach in order to work with external sound producers? Because it's always been a bit more complicated because you won't have a chance to affect the game. The game is already there. You just need to, to adapt. I think that uh, you you want to take 
first of all, I think we we'll all agree that our job as composers for games is to deliver the music that you want at the end of, of the day. You know your game better than we do, um, unless we're in-house, and probably even if we're in-house. Um, so you want to take as much time to explain your vision as you can. And if something is wrong with that vision, then we'll tell you. And a lot of times, like, game developers get the music wrong or they have ideas which doesn't don't make a lot of mu like sense uh, from the composer side. And in those cases, we, we can tell you, I think it's a bad idea. But I think take as much time uh, as you can to make it super clear exactly what you want to support mostly. Like, music in games is there to support a certain feeling. If you want the player to feel agitated, if you want him to feel happy, if you want him to feel sad, if you want it, I don't know, just you know, support the action of the game. Um, so narrow it down to one or two feelings, main feelings that you want to have at that point and explain it like the, the best you can to, to the composer. And take as, like, you know, send as much text or Skypes or whatever you need. The more we get what you want, the better it will be. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, also, I will add that, uh, yeah, as many references as Alan said, like, uh, it's the best. You can always take a lot of references from other games or films and just put on your game, and uh, and you can already see if it works, like, as you understand, and then give that to the composer and continue from there. That works a lot. I also think that um, the first thing you said was that when you show the game, it's already like done. And I know that's usually what happens, but I think it makes a lot of sense to start involving the composer at an earlier stage. I, I know that at an, at an earlier stage, no one thinks about it. And then like a week before release, you're like, oh, we need music now. <laughs> but if you want the music to, be, to become like an organic part of the game and the sounds to be a part of the world that you're creating, it makes a lot of sense to start at a very early stage. I mean, you know you're going to need a composer in the end, so why not involve them like from the beginning? Thanks. I have a question about uh, uh, dynamic music in games. Uh, if you uh, want to create a soundtrack for a specific part of the game, and uh, you, you don't have the option to dynamically control the music, like, uh, w like you said about when you're flying into space and then you can uh, add the low and high pass filters or, or whatever, uh, and you, you, you don't have the option to do it, like uh, to program it, but you have to create a piece that will uh, supplement both aspects without changing anything dynamically, but have to incorporate those two things. How would you do it in a way that they don't contradict in, uh, each other, if you understand my question? I did. Uh, I think, uh, like you said, if you have two tracks and you want to combine them, to switch sometimes in the game. There are several ways. Well, it's, it's very technical, I think. It can be either, uh, it depends. If, if, you, if your system can control the, the beat, then it can be played both in two tracks. One is muted, and then the system switches, uh, like fading in, fading out, both tracks. Now, what I mean is when you don't have the option to do it dynamically, like you, can't, you don't have the option to program it and uh, do it, how can you create one, uh, s one track, oh, one that, track yeah, that will uh, supplement both of these aspects that you want to create and combine them without contradiction each, uh, each other at any phase? It's a matter of timing. If you know in advance how long do you need the, the first part of the track and you know for sure the game is going to change, after that time, then it's, it makes sense. Otherwise, I'm not sure there's a possibility because it's one track ongoing on a timeline without stopping. And then if the game is not synced with it time-wise, I'm not sure it's possible other than switching tracks, as I said. Uh, can I can add that uh, you, of course, will, you will lose some of the emotion in this option because you cannot uh, support uh, two moods at the same time. But uh, if I will have to do that, I will try to like minimize uh, the, uh, the damage, and, like uh, try to make a music that will work b together with both things. But yeah, you will lose some of the wo both worlds. Yeah, it, it's going to be a compromise at, at the end of the day. That's that's the short answer. You you can look for ways to do that, but you know both games and music are time-based arts, so if you can't expect certain events at certain points, 
you, you, it'll be a compromise between the two. But the technology today, is, uh, it's so simple to do, uh, like two tracks, and so, yeah, those ways. Two tracks in the same time may be a little bit more complicated, but you can still use two tracks and just change them. I think it's much easier. One is playing until a certain point in the game, then another one. I think it's uh, this one is possible when you have only one track of music playing. If we can program it, so can you. <laughs> if we can program it, you can compose it. <laughs> okay. Thanks for our sound composing panel.